Kudakwashe, what does Shut Up Your Pretty have that the future does not? Yeah, I think foremost is accessibility. I think the future has the most beautiful, dense, lush prose, but for the everyday Canadian, it might come across as a bit challenging. I know when I was reading it, there were some road bumps I ran into with just the descriptions and the paragraphs and the elongated metaphors. I think it's so dense and lush that it's easy to get a bit lost in. Whereas Shut Up Your Pretty, I found, carried the same art and majesty and wonder, but it was a bit more accessible. Speaking to Taya, she told me about her deliberate choice to choose everyday words so that people from every community um, with all access to the various resources that communities have can still read this book, can still derive meaning from this book. Um, for example, one of my favorite um, short stories, and this is only temporary, it details uh, the death of Darnell, who's a young black man. Um, and in one of the opening paragraphs, it uses one of, uh, like it uses an aphora, which is this idea of repeating the opening part of a clause. Or po it's usually poetic. Um, we heard that um, describing how people perceived Darnell, this boy who died. Um, and then it's saying all the stuff that media perpetrates about the black community. And then in the end, the end of that chapter, it's told us who Darnell really is. And you get the immediacy, the, the, the potency of seeing how um, black young men are illustrated in the media. And then you get it in that artful literary way and in a way that is accessible because the word choice was deliberate to make sure that the everyday reader could access it. But you still get that beautiful art, that beautiful deliberate, deliberate choice and mastery of skill and craft. And I think that in that way, you know, shut up, you're pretty. Um, it just, it, it handles accessibility a bit better for me.